Hello YouTube, in this video we're gonna talk about calculus, and how it is important for electronics engineering. As many branches of mathematics, calculus was developed with the aim of solving some specific real problem, and then took off as a subject by itself, just to find applications in many other branches of science. Calculus has no single inventor but it got its name from a work written in Latin by a guy with a nice wig called Gottfried Leibniz. Calculus, simply put, is the mathematical study of change. By grasping its concepts it becomes much easier to analyze what goes on when quantities vary in a system. The fundamental tool of calculus is the derivative. The derivative of a function f of x with respect to x can be represented by the notation df of x over dx. That means the rate of change at the point f of x comma x. In practical terms it is the slope of a tangent line that touches that point. The derivative itself is a function of x, because for each point of the curve f of x where a derivative exists there is a tangent straight line, and is normally represented by the notation f prime of x. There are techniques to deduce the derivative for the most usual functions and the result can be found in tables on the internet or in any books on the subject. The basic tool for finding derivatives is called limit. The inverse of the derivative is the integral which can be geometrically calculated as the area under its curve with respect to the x-axis. Note that an area can be negative. What is the relation of the area under a curve and the rate of change of a function? The best way to see this is graphically. Take a function like this for instance. Notice that as we measure the area from 0 to x, the area keeps constantly growing with x. From a certain point on, the total area does not grow anymore. So the function itself shows the rate of change of the area below it. If you plot the area you will have the curve of its integral function. Let's start to see this applied to electronics. Current can be represented as the quantity of charge that flowed through a surface over time. Current is the rate of change of charge with respect to time. In a capacitor charge is accumulated and produces a voltage that is equal to the charge accumulated over the capacitance. So I of T equals the capacitance times dV of T over dT. Let's now consider this circuit. The operational amplifier, or op-amp, is there to provide a virtual ground. This means that the voltage at the inverting input will be maintained by the op-amp equal to the voltage of the non-inverting input which is tied to ground. To understand how this is accomplished I recommend you to watch Dave's excellent tutorial on op-amps at the EEV blog channel. Since the impedance at the inverting input is very high, or infinite in the case of an ideal op-amp, we can consider that all of the current through the capacitor will go across the feedback resistor and produce an output voltage that is proportional to this current with a minus sign. This voltage will thus be proportional to the derivative of the input voltage. For no other reason this circuit is called a differentiator, because differentiation is the process by which we deduce a derivative function. Keep in mind that when we talk about rates of change in general, it can be changed with respect to any variable, not only time. In this video, though, we are going to be talking about quantities as a function of time. So here we have a breadboard implementation, and since the output is inverted, we undo the inversion with the oscilloscope. Let's try a constant voltage for instance. The output is zero because the input voltage is not changing, the rate of change is zero. Now, let's have a little more fun. Let's use a triangle wave. We can see that the output is a square wave. When the voltage is rising the output will show that by featuring a positive constant voltage proportional to the positive constant rate of change. When the voltage is decreasing the output will be negative to reflect this negative rate of change and so on. And now for something a little more complicated, the sine wave. 
The output looks like a sine wave too, but wait, it is a little displaced in time with respect to the input. Consulting a table of derivatives we see that the derivative of the sine function is the cosine which leads the sine by one quarter of the period. That's exactly what we see on the oscilloscope. Let's try a square wave. You can notice that the square wave produces positive and negative peaks at the output. This is so because the square wave is not actually square. Looking closer, we can see that its curve does not change instantly from one level to the other. You have a steep slope connecting them. This abrupt change will reflect as a high instant peak at the output. The integrator, as you may have guessed, is a circuit that undoes the job of the differentiator. Since the current through a capacitor is the derivative of its voltage, the voltage is the integral of its current. So by applying a signal at the input, the current will be V of T over R, which will be fed to the capacitor. The capacitor will respond accordingly with the integral of the current that will appear as the output voltage. Remember that the inverting input of the op-amp is a virtual ground. A real circuit will sometimes have a reset switch because integration deals with accumulation of quantities. It is sort of an analog memory. If there is no activity at the input, the output will ideally maintain the last value achieved. Depending on the input signal, this accumulation can get the op-amp to saturate. So you reset the capacitor to zero volts to start the calculation of a new integral. But often a real integrator circuit will have a large resistor in parallel with the capacitor so that any value accumulated can be automatically reset after a sufficiently long time. This will obviously affect precision, so its resistance will be calculated with a value much greater than the impedance of the capacitor to the minimum frequency present at the input signal. This resistor also prevents op-amp offset voltages from being interpreted as a constant signal at the input which would charge the capacitor until the saturation of the op-amp output. I'll leave the implementation of the integrator for those of you playing along at home. You can also experiment with inductors, since with them V of T equals L times DI of T over DT. Of course calculus is much more than what we saw here, and finds many more applications in electronics. But I hope that, if you got inspired by this video, you take calculus seriously without losing perspective of its applications in electronics. Or you can get interested by the pure fun of it, if you have a penchant for mathematics. Who knows when we are going to have a new James Maxwell or Albert Einstein, whose theories make extensive use of advanced calculus. Thanks for watching, have a good night and stay beautiful.